Alipadhyami and Govardhan Puja always happen on a Vishaka Nakshatra, which is under the tutelage of Brihaspati, the Deva Guru, which in turn is for the first three quarters in none other than the Asura Guru, Shukracharya's purview of Tularashi as well. Welcome. Namaskara. Wish you a wonderful sacrificial Balipadhyami. Many people pronounce this as Balipadhyami, but it's actually Padhyami. Padhyami is standing for the first and Bali is standing for sacrifice. Every first day of the phase of the moon is a Padhyami. So you get two Padhyamis every month and about 24 to 26 every year. So what's special about this particular Padhyami? Well, it goes with what we talked about last night, which was a new moon night, Amavasya which again happens 12 or 13 times a year. But the speciality of it last night was that it occurred in our own imagination as I described to you last night. That is the pearly nakshatra of Swati is where the sun and moon conjoined as apparent from an earth-based observer that all of us are, are, I hope. Now, that gave us an opportunity for our mind, which is externally represented by the moon, and our soul, Atma or Brahman, which is externally represented by Surya or the Sun to come together in a quarter which is typically in the netherworlds or the underworld in the care of the dawn, Rahu, which is nothing but our own imagination, most of the time going haywire which is why people dread Rahu, Rahu Kalam, etc. or a Rahu Dasha or even a Rahu Bhukti for that matter. Well, it's a wonderful tool if only we understood it well, took care of it appropriately and utilized it as and when needed efficiently and effectively. Then it could work wonders for us actually. And every year on the Pavali, with our mind and soul focused on the imagination in the lower chakras below the Muladhara, we have an opportunity to leverage that potential of the imagination. Well, this shirt, for example, was imagined in Goa. And it does wonders, right? And there's so many other things which imagination has made life so amazing for us. But there are many amongst us who have also experienced the problems with dysentery-like imagination, which goes on by itself without the control of our mind or the intellect, leave alone the vital energy and the Atman. And it is to bring back that control or hierarchy amongst the various dimensions of us 
and utilize things for what they have been designed for that these festivals have been designed for too. Many people think that it is the day on which Bali Chakravarti, one of the Asuras, a grandson of Prahalad Maharaj and a great grandson of Hiranyakashipu, both of whom you would have heard in the story of Narasimha or Narasimha Jayanti, we've discussed this. But we have gone three generations after that, after Hiranyakashipu, Prahlada, his son, and then Bali Chakravarti. And we needed to take for the first time a human avatar, physically underdeveloped as a dwarf, Vamana, and move up from our awareness at the Manipur Chakra to the awareness at our Anahata Chakra. This transition, this evolution, this growth in us, this spiritual ascension of the ladder, so to speak, using our consciousness or awareness or Kundalini Shakti, is the advancement of an avatar. But that happened again, probably 10 to 12 millennia ago. But what we are talking about is a, an astronomical feature that happens ever since this planet Earth has existed. And you know, the age of that is far more than 12 millennia. So, the more important thing to understand is from the name itself, Bali Padyami, sacrifice first. Yes. Yesterday, there was no need for a sacrifice. It was a mavasya. The mind was in tune with the soul. Could we have remained just like that? Well, it gets too boring after a while. We want play, we want a game, we want Leela. So our mind goes on a tour, detour for most people, but a jolly good tour if you are in the spiritual path for a month and then game comes back in conjunction with the sun. In other words, the mind goes a little away from the soul. It is the little finger going a little away from the middle finger and coming back again once a month. But during that period that the mind is away from the intellect, can we retain some of that wonderful experience that we had of the conjoinment of the mind and the soul? Yes, we can. And that's most beautifully expressed after the Pavali Amavasya because it's not just Balipadhyami but also Govardhan Puja and even more interestingly the first day of a six-day Vrata called Skanda Shashti. Again, names are the key to all of this. Many people would think of this as associated with Subramanya, Murga, Kartikeya, Aum Saravana Bhavaya Nava. The Skanda Shashti, Kavasam or Kavach, that is the protective gear, the armor of bravery, Skanda, which happens as the sixth, not the first. The first is Balipadhyami. But Palipadhyami or sacrifice of our likes and dislikes is what eventually leads us to the capability of better perception and on the sixth day, the courage and conviction based purely on a mystical perception of what is as it is.
then that courage and conviction has a value. Otherwise, it's not of much use. And that's precisely what we are here to celebrate. Coming again to the meanings, Govardhan Puja. Many people associated with a boy Krishna 5,500 years ago carrying the mountain on his little finger. What does it mean? The capability of our Atma or soul if it has control over the reins of the mind, the mind can do wonderful things. Because the little finger, remember, represents the mind. Once again, for those of you who are late starters on this channel, this is the soul, this is our vital energy or prana, this is our intellect, this is our mind, and this is our body. And so the mind plays a very, very critical role if and only if it's in the control of our vital energies and the Atman and of course the intellect too. Now the little finger, namely the mind, has enormous power and can achieve things which the physical body can't even dream of. Dreams are mostly happening in the mind with the emotions and the intellect with the thoughts being recharged, recycled. Now, Govardhan Puja is better understood from the etymology of Go, meaning life, life energy. And Vardhan meaning progress. Once the life energy or prana is enhanced, we are able to capture more of life from the infinite reservoir around us. Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate From infinity, when infinity is taken, infinity alone remains. Infinity around us and infinity within us, if only we are ready to take it. And that's the infinite amount of prana that we have access to. And that's represented by Vayu and the Bhamanavatar as well. So Govardhan Puja, again, is not only an increase in the vital energy, Govardhan, Pranas increase, but also it's a puja. And many people think puja is prayer or worship. No, it's an invocation where punar jayati iti puja, that which is renewed. Every time we forget, we renew to go back to our souls. And that was done last night at the Amavasya. Now, on the Pratipad, very first thing we do is sacrifice of all likes and dislikes. Balipadhyami. And then we are ready to march on in another five days. The sixth day, which is Shashti, to celebrate our courage and conviction based purely on perception. Otherwise, it would be blind faith and that can be disastrous. Well, there is a small percentage of success and people are willing to take that risk and promote confidence as if it was the greatest thing to have. But no, you have to start with Bali. Bali is Padhyami first. Then you reach conviction, courage, confidence slowly. So Govardhan Puja is the growth of our prana to create a renewal in all of our five dimensions. And Bhalipadhyami is sacrifice first. And Skanda Shashti is courage and conviction upon maturity, not in the beginning, after sacrifice, after perception. And 
all of these wonderful things are what we celebrate on this fourth day of Deepavali every year. I wish you a great sacrificial Balipadhyami and a march on towards conviction, courage towards the Shashti upcoming. Namaskar. Thank you.